the, the reason I love picture books as a platform so much is because that it's 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 really this this excellent arena in which you can weave words and pictures in and out of each other without them doing the same things at all. In fact, you can have them doing totally opposite things, and then they combine to create this this middle ground, this this the the tone of what a, a story can be. Uh, hello, my name is Oliver Jeffers. Uh, my occupation is I, I don't really know. I draw stuff, make stuff, tell stories. Bit of this, bit of that. I, I was a, an artist before I was a, a picture book maker, um, and picture books actually came out of uh, making art, because a lot of the, the art that I was making was primarily interested in putting words and pictures together and sort of using those two tools as a, as a way to tell stories. I had been collecting books of old uh, from that I had grown up with, and I'd been getting nicer versions of them and, and picking up weird ones from France and, and uh, Mexico and all sorts of places and, and collecting because I thought they were really just cool objects, art objects, and it hadn't really occurred to me that this is this is a perfect platform for, for what I do with words and pictures. But then once I did make that mental switch, it was it was relatively easy and it was a skin I felt quite comfortable in. After that, it was a bit of an effort of, all right, well, how do I get my work noticed? So I researched and, and selected the publishers that I wanted to work with and then sent them my, my work. Whenever I first approached publishers, I approached with a, a solid concept for what actually turned out to be my first book, How to Catch a Star. So I presented a fully formed book. So there was never any indication, there was never any uh, desire for a publisher to pair me with a, with a writer because in, in that first package I sent them they, they noticed the potential for a complete package in essence and I was always encouraged to just do my own thing now. I'm inspired by things that really happen all around me. Like there's no, I don't deal with mystery, sort of, I don't deal with, with magic or fantasy so much in my books. Even that the great leaps of, of faith are made based in and around reality, like I exaggerate rather than, than totally deal in fantasy. Um, like the, it's it's kind of believable that a boy can climb up a, a rope to the moon, not because you can actually do that, but because a boy can climb a rope. You know, it's not like he's spreaded wings and he's flown. So it's like, oh yeah, you know, I can I can climb a rope. So if I just kept going, I can get to the moon. So they're exaggerations rather than complete fabrications. The hardest part of making a picture book is not repeating yourself and uh, fitting everything into a, a pre-prescribed number of pages. Uh, most picture books are 32 pages because it's just cheaper to print that way. And trying to create a good story with a beginning and a middle and an end in an interesting way that happens in that amount of space is, I think, the most time-consuming part. My big secret, I suppose, is that I don't really write books for kids. <laughs> I write books for me. Um, I try to avoid calling them kids' books as often as possible, and instead just call them picture books. So, yes, there is an element of me not being condescending to kids, because, it, well, in one sense, I think a lot of kids are a lot smarter than people give credit for, but in another sense, I'm just writing the stories that I want to feel satisfied with, and it just so happens that my sense of humor coincides perfectly in with with uh, the kid's sense of humor. And, and, you know, I try to keep things simple and, and clean and, and straightforward uh, and out of that is, is born in honesty. I'm really lucky I get to do this for a living.